Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. We are almost at 32,000 subscribers, so please hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel before we get started. And today I'm going to be doing my updated 2024 Republican primary wish list. I understand 2024 is four years away now, but still I think it's something that it's important we talk about when it comes to the future of the Republican Party, the future of the conservative movement as a whole. So it's important that we're going to jump and dive into this. This is not just a wish list of candidates that I want to run. I'm basically going to address almost every candidate that people have asked me to basically say, should they run? Should they not run? Things like that. I'm going to talk about candidates that I want. I'm also going to talk about candidates I really don't want to run or candidates that I believe you should steer clear from. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going to start here by talking about my pre-honorable mentions. These are candidates who I would like to see run, but it's not really likely that they do so. And both candidates may be eligible to run under the right circumstances circumstance and would be viable to get the nomination, in my opinion, if they decided to do so. And if nominated, I would have no choice but to support them, and I probably would do so without any problems. And these two candidates would drive the left crazy under every single circumstance. The first candidate here, of course, is Donald J. Trump, our current president. People are going to say, well, why is Trump on the 2024 list? Well, there's a good chance that Donald Trump actually could run again if he loses. I don't believe he will lose, but let's say this thing destroys the economy, his approval goes down the tubes. However, candidate President Joe Biden is extremely unpopular. Well, maybe Donald Trump would have support behind him. He is a big ego. I think he would run again. I think he could get the nomination, and I don't think he goes into things to lose them. If he runs again, he very well could pull a Grover Cleveland. Now, this hasn't been done in a while. The last president that served one term that talked about maybe running again was Gerald Ford back in 1980. However, he tried to then settle for the VP slot under Reagan, and he didn't get it. So it's unlikely that it would happen, but if Donald Donald Trump loses, but somehow uh, he would be leading in a bunch of head-to-head -head polls over Biden when it comes to 2024, and he wants to run. Be my guest. He should probably run, and he probably would win. So Donald Trump is on this list for this reason. Now people are going to say, well, he might be too old. He's 78. Well, I mean, Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, Mike Bloomberg, they were all running on the Dem ticket. They're all 78. So I don't think that age is a big issue or a big factor right now, but I do agree that we need new blood, and I'm going to get to that later. So number two candidate, this is another basically joke candidate, Alex Jones, the radio host, Alex Jones. People are going to say, why do you like this guy? He's crazy. Well, Alex Jones is a little bit of a meme, but I think that if he actually ran for president, he could send the establishment, the right, the left, everybody into total panic mode. He would expose all the corruption. He would slash spending everywhere. He would become basically a very good president if he actually had the office to himself. I don't believe that's necessarily going to happen, but a lot of people are saying, oh, he's not viable he's not viable. His approval rating is like 30. Well, Donald Trump's approval back in 2015 was in the low 20s, and if he was able to get the party to consolidate behind him because he's got a decent one-fifth of the party base behind him already, you never know. So that's why he's on this list. I don't expect him to run. A lot of people in the comments are going to be saying, Alex is good where he is, and that's true. I'd be fine with that, obviously. I think he's very good where he is. However, the media, they can't silence him if he's going to be running for public office. They can't be taking you off all these platforms if you're going to be running to be the leader of the free world. So if he actually does give it a run, I would not be too surprised myself. Okay, but here we're going to move on to our next set of candidates. The establishment, in my opinion, just say no to these establishments candidates. These are candidates that will be pushed by the corporate conservatives, Conservative Inc., and they're going to be pushed by them at all costs. But to buck the establishment and put true America first conservatives in the White House, we must oppose these people. And some of these people who I'm going to mention that you should probably not vote for may shock you, but I'm going to give you rationale behind it. So don't, don't look at the picture and then dislike the page or unsubscribe because you just don't like what I have to say about a candidate. Try to listen through and try to understand because I know a lot of my viewers like some of these candidates and that's okay, but we're going to move on and talk about exactly why I oppose uh, these five candidates. Candidate number one is Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley, the governor of South Carolina, UN ambassador. I oppose her for quite a few reasons. I do not want Nikki Haley to lead the ticket. And no, it is not just because she is a woman. That's not the main reason why 
I oppose a Nikki Haley presidency, like some people in the comment section, the so-called woke right now that has basically been created by Charlie Kirk and Con Inc. have been talking about. Nikki Haley would be a terrible candidate. She would start a bunch of foreign wars, basically. She's basically a female version of George Bush, in my opinion. She says, we need immigrants. She says, we need immigrants and we need their culture. Yet you have all these people, if you look at Europe, these people that come into Europe and they've basically led a destruction of the culture there and she wants the same thing to happen here. She wants us to bring in all these people. These people aren't going to be voting for the Republican Party in large numbers, more likely than not. So apparently I'd say no to Nikki Haley. She's just a neocon. She's just a token of the establishment. The left-wing media even, and the neocon media as well, they'll be pushing her consistently. My opinion when it comes to Nikki Haley just say no. Big red flags. I'm going to have to tell you, you should probably just oppose her. Now, Dan Crenshaw is another candidate. Dan Crenshaw, a big interventionist overseas, a big pusher of the TPUSA conservative Inc. agenda, is another candidate that I'm just going to have to say, say no to. He is, not only is he very, very cringe, we call him Captain Cringe Shaw for short, but obviously Dan Crenshaw, he wants foreign wars overseas. He wants mass, mass numbers of immigration. He's going to be doing rallies, probably speaking Spanish at his rallies if he's the nominee, and that's very cringe, and that's not a bilingual America that I want to live in. I don't want to live in a press one for English, press two for Spanish type of country, not to mention the fact that this guy is a total gun grabber. He goes after people's guns. He goes after them consistently. He pushes red flag laws. Red flag laws are much worse than most forms of gun control the left are even pushing. They can be easily, easily abused. For that reason alone, I oppose Dan Crenshaw significantly. I may have spoken positive about him one or two years ago, but my views have changed a little bit as well as Dan Crenshaw's views have changed a little bit, and he's not necessarily uh, going to put America first overseas in his foreign policy. So for that alone, I'm going to have to say, say no to the pirate man in Dan Crenshaw. The third candidate, I'm going to have to tell you to say no to, and this is one of these candidates that is probably not going to run anyways, is Ben Shapiro, radio host Ben Shapiro, the Republican from California. Again, Ben may be good for some social issues. He might be good on some social issues. However, I do believe that his foreign policy is very interventionist, and he really is not somebody that's able to take a stand for anything. He's just going to basically let the left walk all over him, and then he'll complain about a, a couple of things that do absolutely nothing about it. This is not somebody that really demonstrates full leadership. Maybe Ben would be okay as a Supreme Court justice. But other than that, I really don't think that Ben Shapiro should be in, you know, a, 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 the president of the United States. I don't think he would be a great leader for the Republican Party. And this guy cannot connect to voters. I know it's probably not going to happen that he runs. But this guy cannot connect to voters. You're just basically talking at somebody. 3,000 words per minute at some factory workers in Michigan talking about trade and how free trade is good and fair trade is bad, which is basically what he's been saying. Again, it's another reason why I oppose Ben Shapiro is because of his trade stances, and I really think that that would be detrimental to the party, a party that's been moving in a more populist, you know, sort of more economic, moderate, socially conservative type of, of nationalistic rhetoric at a, at a national level. I think that Ben Shapiro would be a little bit devastating to that. So honestly, I'll have to say no to Ben Shapiro running in 2024, even even though he probably isn't, if anything, he ever does run for public office, he's probably going to run for an Orange County House of Representatives seat or something by the end of the decade, but he's probably not going to run for president. Now, this is the second to last candidate that I'm going to have to tell my viewers to probably stay away from in the 2024 Republican primary. And this candidate is Mike Pence, the Republican from Indiana. A lot of people are going to be saying, hey, wait a minute, I like Mike Pence. I trust Mike. He's Trump's VP. And I agree that Mike Pence is better than obviously Nikki Haley and Dan Crenshaw and even Ben Shapiro, and he probably would do well in, in certain issues like trade. I mean, he's from the Rust Belt, he was okay as governor, and he would drive the left crazy. However, at the same time, I don't trust his charisma. I don't really trust his ability to stand up for America overseas as much as people like Donald Trump would. I really just don't think he has much spirit, and I've seen him at the Trump rallies. He's okay, but he's not even a very good hype man for Trump. I don't really see this guy potentially going to a national stage, going face to face with the Democrats and being able to go up there and just debate them on a national scale and win over undecided voters. 
I don't think Mike Pence is going to be very valuable in that case. I don't think he's going to be very good for that kind of stuff. So I'm going to have to say no to Mike Pence. And this is the last candidate that I'm going to have to tell you to say no to. And this is Don Jr. And a lot of people are going to be saying, hey, wait a minute. Why don't you like Don Jr.? You love Donald Trump. And I don't hate Don Jr. I mean, if he wants to run for president down the road, he might. I'm just against the dynasty thing, especially back-to-back -back Trumps. I don't think that would necessarily win over a wide portion of the audience. And also, Donald Trump Jr. is best friends with Charlie Kirk. He's best friends with a lot of these people, a lot of the, the neocons, a lot of the conservative Inc. people that have basically been pushing this left-wing agenda five years in advance or five years behind the left. So I'm going to have to tell Don Jr. that I really just don't really want Don Jr. to be elected president. You're, ga you're basically having a Charlie Kirk White House at that point. I really don't trust Don Jr.'s judgment at that point. I'm going to have to say no to Donald Trump Jr. I do apologize. Maybe down the road he could be a candidate if he may maybe reform some of his views or changes who he's basically friends with in the movement, maybe. But until then, I'm going to have to say no to Don Jr. So now we're going to move on to the best five of the field. These are five candidates that I believe are America first, and they're going to energize the party in a more populist direction. And these candidates are relatively new to the national scene, which is good. This party needs new blood. A lot of parties always need new blood, and these people basically can bring that to the forefront. So we're going to get into this in one second. We're going to basically count them down five to one. He basically started off with the worst candidate, Nikki Haley, went down the list of the five I don't want. We're basically going to start with the five that I do want, candidate number five that I do want. Basically, we're going to count down from the fifth best to the first best just like we counted down from the worst to the fifth worst. This is John James. John James, I hope, and I believe he will be elected senator from the state of Michigan. Again, John James, I believe, would bring a great spirit to the national scene. I saw him speak at a Trump rally last year, and John James was a great speaker. I believe that he might even get the RNC keynote speech this year in the RNC in August. That is going to be something that could be huge. Again, people look back to 2004. Obama was not a senator, but he got the keynote speech at the, R at the DNC at 2004. And what happened, it made him a national star. And four years later, he was elected president of the United States in a landslide. We can make the same comparison with John James here. He very well could galvanize the spirit of the Republican Party, similar to how Obama galvanized the spirit of the Democrat Party in 2008. I'm not just making that comparison, but because they're both black. I'm making the comparison because you have the senator coming to the national scene. You could have made the comparison with Rubio back then, uh, 2010 to 2016, although Rubio was in the Senate for two more years than Obama was when Obama ran for president. He was only in the Senate for four years. Rubio was in the Senate for six years. So moving on, I think John James would be a good candidate. But our next candidate on the list is Brian Kemp, governor of Georgia. Brian Kemp has been a staunch supporter of abortion rights. He's been a staunch supporter of the Second Amendment and things like that. He's been a great governor of Georgia, and he was elected narrowly. He was kind of a, a figure that was a little controversial because, again, he was he had the meme factor going for him. He kind of had the scandal factor working against him. I mean, his advertisements were a little bit risque, a little bit out of the box, you could say. However, he did a very, very good job of becoming governor, and his approval rating has gone up significantly in most of the polls that I've seen. So that's a good thing. I think Brian Kemp would bring a good amount of energy to the national scene. I would like to see Brian Kemp run for president. He's not too old. He's going to be in his early 60s. Definitely, that's a good thing. We want more younger people than what we've seen, not just from Trump, but on the Democrat side recently. We've seen very, very old people running. So I think Brian Kemp would do a very, very good job as president of the United States. Moving forward, number three is Josh Hawley. Josh Hawley is a true American patriot. Josh Hawley is truly America first. He's been fighting against big tech censorship, and he's one of the only people in government that's actually had the balls to stand up to these companies, and this is something we need moving forward, this sort of, I'm not afraid to break up the big companies. I'm not going to use the my private company type of argument. I'm not going to be this, this milk toast soft libertarian when it comes to economic issues. I'm going to stand up for America. I don't really care if it's considered right or left. I'm going to put America first no matter what. That's kind of the true conservatism you need. I love Josh Hawley. I think Josh Hawley would be a potentially a good VP candidate that you could say, but I think Hawley would be good uh, running for president as well. I'd like to see him run. I don't know if he'd get the nomination, but either way, I think he could end up on the ticket. He'd be a good VP for my number two or number one candidate, number two candidate right here, Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis is 
approval rating is very, very big. He's basically universally loved in the state of Florida, and if you ran him against Gillum today, he'd probably win by 25 to 30 points, especially with the nonsense that happened with Andrew Gillum. So I do believe that Ron DeSantis is going to be a very good president. If he was president, he's been a very good governor. He has pushed the Trump agenda. However, at the same time, he's been able to make that outreach. He did very, very well with black voters. He got like 15% of them against Andrew Gillum, despite Andrew Gillum levying accusations of racism against him. It failed. He has a, a 50... 8% approval rating or something like that. Among Hispanic voters, he does very well and with Hispanics in Florida. I think he could do well in the Sun Belt. I think he would do well among white suburban voters, the college-educated voters. I think he could bring them them home back to the party. Maybe some of those Romney voters who, who didn't vote for Trump, maybe maybe they, they like some parts of Trump's policies. I think he could bring them home to the party. Definitely the optics check factor. Again, he's definitely optical. He's very smart. He's gone to uh, Harvard. He served in the military things like that. So obviously Ron DeSantis is going to be a top of the line candidate and he probably will be the 2024 nominee in my opinion. And I'm not the biggest fan of him and compared to some of these other candidates, but basically I think he would probably be the safest pick of these five that would probably be able to go up and win no matter what. But the wild card I'm going to choose for number one may not actually run, but it's been speculated in both Republican circles and Democrat circles that he may run. And it is the legendary Tucker Carl Carlson, Tucker Carlson, he's been very, very conservative, very pro-America, very pro-America first on a lot of issues, a wide array of issues. Tucker Carlson has been supporting the, not just the president, but the true America first movement and things like protectionism and trade, lowering immigration levels. Maybe we could get an immigration moratorium with Tucker. I think Tucker would focus on legal immigration, not just illegals, but legal immigration, rolling back some of these visa programs, ending chain migration, maybe putting a moratorium on immigration. Tucker Carlson would do a great job, and he's definitely, when it comes to the economy, he's a centrist. He's a pragmatist. He looks at issues that the left looks at. The left is winning the issues when it comes to things like student debt because they're talking about it. Well, guess what? Tucker would talk about it. He would find ways to solve the problem. I think he could make that outreach to some of the center-left people, some of the people that would not vote for a conservative agenda, but looking at the policies of Tucker Carlson, maybe they would, and I think that would draw a lot of people to the party, just like Donald Trump drawed a lot of people to the party. Tucker Carlson is a true populist, a true nationalist, a true American patriot, and I honestly do believe that if he got the nomination, he could win by a 400 electoral vote landslide, but that's just my take on that issue. And I did put some other people in here that might run for better or worse. Some of these people I like, uh, like Matt Gates. Some of these people I'm not so kind on, obviously, Nick Romney or Mitt Romney or whatever you want to call him. Uh, I put a bunch of people on here just in case people in the comments said, what about this person? What about that person? Some of these people on this list are good. Some of the people on this list are bad. Some of these people probably will run. Some of these people on this list probably won't run. I did forget to add uh, Chris Sununu to this list, the uh, governor of New Hampshire. He could be another potential candidate that could run on this list. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Please like this video. Comment down below who would be on your short list and who would be on your short list of people that you would want to see in the White House and who would be on your short list of people who you would not like to be the nominee. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications down below so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. Follow me on Twitter, especially. Link it is in description. Join the Discord and subreddit and donate to the Patreon and subscribe star. All these links are in the description. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle out.